When an autistic person's distress behaviour begins to harm others, it can be very difficult not to see them as an abuser who should know better. Often in this situation, one suddenly expects the autistic person to have full control of their feelings and behaviours and assumes that the autistic person must have malicious intent instead of self-protective intent. It can feel impossible to, to traverse the moral hurdle and to move beyond a victim-perpetrator paradigm. The reality is, the autistic person is just as much of a victim to that which triggered them as the recipient is to whom they go on to harm. Let me be clear, no, it does not make it right to harm others. What I'm inviting people to do here is to transcend and look beyond the moral slant with which we perceive these matters and to look at this through the lens of suffering. When we achieve the latter, we see that both sides are suffering, that both sides need love, support and compassion, and that punishment and moral condemnation helps no one. Sometimes though, sometimes though not always, seeing things in terms of right or wrong muddies the waters. We have to try very hard to understand that the autistic person is acting from a place of trauma and anxiety and not from a place of malicious intent. This can be colossally difficult for many autistics who hunger and fight fiercely for justice. I don't think a traditional morality paradigm is applicable to or compatible with the ND community, many of whom experience distress behaviours that have the potential to harm others and drive them away. Are these bad people or are they themselves struggling, suffering and unable to control their behaviours? I seldom see bad autistic people. I see autistic people who are explosive, autistic people whose anxiety impinges on others, and autistic people who say things they don't necessarily mean when in fight or flight mode. I never see autistic people who deserve to be ridiculed, judged harshly and shamed. I see autistic people who need someone to look beyond the surface, to not take their distress behaviours personally, and to understand that beneath the fiery temper and whirlwind-like intensity exists a frightened and lonely autistic person who just needs a hug, a friend and someone to talk to. No, it doesn't mean we praise distress behaviours or victim blame the recipient. It just does no one any good to view meltdowns, anxiety and distress behaviours through a moral lens. People often ask me, but Harry, I can't let my child get away with... Stop. Do you see what you're doing? You assume that because your child has expressed a behaviour that happens to offend the basic moral principles of society, the child in question has to be punished. This is a prime example of living life from within a paradigm of traditional morality. I understand that what you've seen disgusts you. There are social conditioning and evolutionary explanations for that. No one wants to see another child being punched. No one wants to see a child biting their mother. No one wants to, to hear that a child threatens to burn their house down whilst their family are tied to chairs inside. I don't either. This is hero. This is heavy, harrowing stuff. But I don't see bad children here. I don't see children who need a jolly good hiding. I don't see children who need firmer discipline. I see lost children, hurt children, unseen children, unheard children, misunderstood children, suffering children, children who don't know who they are, what they're doing or how to stop themselves, children who don't understand why they should stop themselves. If we punish these children at a time they need compassion and understanding the most, we damage their psyches, invalidate them, stigmatise their distress and ultimately make everything a hundred times worse. They will go on to hate themselves. They will think they deserve to suffer. They think, think they deserve to be hated by everyone and think they are undeserving of love. How are autistic children and adults ever going to accept themselves when we reject them at a time they need us the most? When they are most in need of understanding, they are told off, abandoned, left out in the cold, expelled from school and disinvited from events. Stigmatising attitudes to harmful stress, distress behaviours make everything worse. Morally condemning distress behaviours makes everything worse. Making an autistic person feel like they are terrible, evil and abusive, when in reality they are vulnerable, scared and out of control, makes everything worse. Of course we mustn't invalidate the experience of the recipient. The recipient needs love and care and support too. The recipient is traumatised by the autistic person. This is awful and very sad, but the autistic person's distress behaviours must not and cannot be stigmatised. The autistic person in distress must not be punished or morally condemned just because their behaviours offend the basic moral principles of society. These harsh realities may need to be explained to the recipient, who may want revenge and feel unable to move away from the demonic image they've built in their head of the autistic person in distress. 
The neurodivergent mind is neither good nor bad. It is complex, multi-dimensional, sometimes beautiful, sometimes intense, and sometimes hard to be around. Binary concepts like right or wrong may not be applicable here. Instead, can we strive to alleviate suffering and prevent suffering? Why does someone have to be punished all the time? Don't we do that to ourselves enough anyway? A paradigm of traditional morality, in my belief, is neither applicable to nor compatible with neurodivergent experience. Why? Because many of us have been cursed with distress behaviours that do get leaked onto others sometimes. These people don't need punishment, not least because they punish themselves for this anyway. Once the fierce inner protector retreats back into its lair, the autistic person's true empathetic self returns and gasps at the hurt they have inflicted even to people they love and care about, and drowns in remorse and self-loathing. Meltdowns and distress behaviours are not evil acts which emanate from bad people. They are involuntary explosions that emanate from frightened, uncontrolled and often traumatised neurodivergent people who have reached their limit of endurance and who have no idea how to control themselves. They are often good people who would give anything to be able to control themselves in order to prevent themselves from hurting people and risking social exclusion on a mass scale. They need love, compassion, support and understanding. They do not need people to morally judge them, punish them or simply make them feel bad.